With the development of the M1 series of processors, Apple has given us some really powerful machines from the likes of the iPad Pro to the MacBook and the Mac Mini. These are great for people like me who edit in 4K, but what about people with even more demanding creative workflows? Well, that's where the latest entry comes in, the M1 Ultra inside the Mac Studio. I'm Cam Bunton from PocketLint, and this is our review. And while you're here, if you do like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. The easiest way to describe the look of the Mac Studio is as a beefed up Mac Mini. Featuring the same design language, the square shaped box, which is made from 80% recycled aluminium. And it sits firmly on your desk and is about the same height as two Mac Minis placed on top of each other. It features the same rounded edges and the usual polished Apple logo on the top. But that's pretty much where the similarities end. Understanding the constant need to connect devices, there are two USB-C ports on the front. Faster Thunderbolt 4 if you opt for the M1 Ultra model. And that's next to the SDXC card slot, so you don't have to go rummaging around the back when you're importing video and images from your camera. At the rear of the device, you'll find even more ports. Apple has banished any memory of a portless future here. Still, those four Thunderbolt 4 ports back here will be useful, especially if you want multiple monitors. And you even get classic USB Type-A ports, an HDMI, a 3.5mm port for audio. Oh, and there's Ethernet. You basically get everything. It's also worth noting that, like the Mac Mini, the Mac Studio is just part of the solution to a better Mac workflow. So in the box, you'll get the Mac Studio and the power cable and nothing else. To get going properly, you'll obviously need a new monitor, keyboard and mouse if you don't have those already. And that, of course, is going to be extra money on top of already a lot of money. Other minor design touches include that big grille made up of machined holes that runs along the entire width of the Mac Studio's rear, and the ring of air holes around that hump in the bottom surface that allows it to suck in air and blow it up out of the back to keep the powerful internals cool. Now being a big hunk of metal means there's some weight to the Mac Studio, but it's small enough that you could even describe it as portable. In fact, some companies are already making bags to carry it around in. Now, while the design is certainly one of the niceties about the Mac Studio, it's not what's going to draw your attention to it. It's about the power it delivers, and boy, does it have that in spades. There are two base configurations available. There's the entry level, which features the M1 Max processor with a 10-core CPU, 24-core GPU, and 16-core neural engine. You also get 32GB of memory and 512GB for SSD storage. The other comes with the M1 Ultra processor, which is essentially two M1 Maxes stuck together. That means 20-core CPU, 48 GPU, and a 30-core neural engine. There's also 64 gigabytes of memory and a terabyte of storage. Now, as with most Apple machines, you can pay more to get more of everything. You can upgrade to a staggering 128 gigabytes of RAM and up to 8 terabytes of storage, which is, quite frankly, massive. Our own particular unit is the M1 Ultra model with 128GB of RAM and a 2TB SSD. And let me tell you, it's ridiculously powerful. Now, we put it into real word terms. The effortlessness with which the studio can handle really high resolution, high bitrate files is simply staggering. Skimming through 8K preview files in Final Cut Pro or a timeline with multiple 8K video streams stacked on top of each other, and you'd assume there'd be lots of frames dropping or stuttering or choking. But no, the M1 Ultra, with all that memory, handles it really smoothly. As a sort of comparison, my daily M1 Mac Mini can do this, but with 4K video and maybe two or three streams on top of each other. But we were playing around with about 15 8K streams, all at once, playing on the preview and there was no frame dropping. This file Apple sent us to play with was only about 34 seconds long, but due to the high resolution and bitrate, weighed up around 16 gigabytes in total. Just for reference, the video you're watching right now will probably be about a quarter of that size, and will probably take my Mac Mini about seven or eight minutes to export. This 8K 16 gigabyte Final Cut Pro project on an almost maxed out M1 Ultra Mac Studio took 24 seconds. Now we tried to export the same project on our M1 Pro powered 14 inch MacBook Pro and after stuttering and struggling quite a bit, eventually exported it in about 25 minutes. That's the level of performance we're talking about here. It's astonishing really. 
But it's not just Final Cut Pro. The Mac Studio is unfazed by pretty much everything. Live previews of huge changes within a raw file in Adobe Photoshop appear instantly as if it were a simple JPEG. Logic Pro files with hundreds of audio tracks are no problem either. We couldn't find anything that the Mac Studio struggled with. Now the downside is that to get this level of performance of the machine that we're testing will cost you a cool £6,199 or dollars. In euros, it's about 7,129. Now all that power demands, or nay expects, a decent display to showcase all your work on. So alongside the Mac Studio, Apple also released the Studio Display. It's a step down from the company's Pro Display XDR offering. This new 27-inch 5K Retina display, which comes with both tilt and height adjustable stand options, offers True Tone, 600 nits of brightness, and P3 wide color gamut. There is an option of a nano texture glass coating to reduce screen glare, which, yes, costs more cash. Now, following it in the footsteps of the company's original Thunderbolt cinema displays, the studio display also has a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with center stage and a tri mic array, plus six speakers which support Apple's spatial audio. Now, connecting via Thunderbolt 4, the Mac Studio can run four of these studio displays, plus an additional 4K TV. Further to the ports on the Mac Studio, the Studio Display has its own three USB-C ports and a Thunderbolt 3 port, so you can use it as a hub of sorts. Now, of course, for most people, the Mac Studio is going to be overkill. It's not a general consumer-ready product. However, if you're dealing with big files, and we mean seriously big files day in and day out, then this is going to service those needs, and then some. The Mac Studio is clearly a replacement for the iMac Pro or the standard 27-inch iMac, both of which are now discontinued. But with the added benefit of being able to customize your display options and add on a studio display if you're feeling especially flush. It's also worth noting that Apple is still to release the Mac Pro with Apple Silicon inside. That's a device that Apple was pretty keen to let us know that was still in the works. So we can assume that that is going to be even more powerful somehow, and it could be worth waiting for that if you're wanting the best of the best, but be prepared, it won't be cheap. But for now, the Mac Studio sets a new bar for performance. It's one that will be hard pushed to be beaten by anyone. I've been Cam, I'm at Cam Bunton on social media. If you want to get in touch with me, you can do. Of course, if you do like this video, please do leave a thumbs up. It helps us a great deal. Tap subscribe and the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. And I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.